Hi, Nathan Matthijs for Ars Technica. I'm here at the Mashoud Assembly Facility outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. Today we're going to look at this kind of overlooked chapter of NASA's history. Things we see are usually what's going into space, the orbiters, the shuttles, but all of that starts here at Mashoud. We're going to take a look at some of the technologies, meet some of the people, and hear about the production capabilities that are going to make it possible for Orion and the Space Launch System to take off in 2018. I get to travel back and forth between Huntsville and I'm here at Mishu. And I'm always sitting on the plane, I'm maybe reading some paper, and they'll see the little small, uh, maybe NASA meatball on my, on my paperwork or something like that. And they were asked, uh, oh, you work for NASA? I said, yes, I, I work for NASA. And they said, okay, so why are you going to New Orleans? I'm like, well, there's a facility in New Orleans that I'm responsible for called Mishu, and they are just fascinated that work takes place here in New Orleans. All the large scale manufacturing for NASA takes place right here at Mishu. Within Mishu, we have uh, right around 830 acres uh, of space here. Now we do a $850 million impact to, uh, to this particular region of the country. It creates about 5,400 jobs. This facility is managed by the Marshall Space Flight Center. So all of the design, research work for the rocket comes out of the Marshall Space Flight Center, but when it comes to the actual production, that production for the core stages is done right here at uh, Mishu. Of course, our namesake, Antoine Michoud, this was his facility. Uh, he was growing sugarcane here, and so this, the chimneys were used to refine that sugarcane. You think about Michoud, it really started back in the 1940s uh, time frame. A lot of military type applications, believe it or not, they used to build wooden planes here at Michoud. Uh, in the 60s, that's when Von Braun and his team, the old Saturn V program, uh, came along from uh, the Marshall Space Flight Center. But we also uh, did the external tank here. And that was really our heritage. We built 135 tanks right here uh, at Mishu. That serviced the uh, shuttle program for years, and we were very proud of that work. When you do long-term space travel, you gotta think about all the supporting systems, whether you're talking about the human body, or you're talking about the systems itself. All those things are being developed. The SLS, the heavy lift rocket, it's gonna be the most massive ro rocket we've seen in our history. Uh, it's gonna carry humans. Uh, way beyond low Earth orbit. You know, we always talk about low Earth orbit, the International Space Station. Uh, we're excited to have that roll off in the uh, 2018 uh, time frame when we do the first test flight. And then by 2021, we'll start flying astronauts with some test missions as well. Whether we go on to a Lagrange point or maybe looking at an asteroid to understand this chemical makeup, or we're talking about long-term duration missions to Mars. So those are the things that we're working on. We're very, very excited. You can't get to Mars without coming through New Orleans. <laughs> You think about the building that we actually build SLS and Orion in. We call it Building 103, but that's 43 acres under one roof line. It's environmentally controlled and it's a phenomenal facility. All the welding, the foam, the applications for the foaming, all that takes place here, the cleaning of the tank, et cetera, and all the different crafts and support. And you think about where we were, even with the shuttle program, technology and innovation has changed. So these, these tools are just phenomenal. The size of the tools, the size of the welding that we can do. Old days, physically we had an individual uh, welding. Now we have machines that can weld, but not only do they weld, but they can also inspect at the same time. So these are phenomenal equipment. And we look at the schedule for SLS, we talk about building two uh, rockets here every year. So that production line will continue to go for the next uh, probably 10, 20, and 30 years. My team, we talk a lot about what we want to be in the next three, five, 10, and 15 years. So we're always looking at how to improve and increase our overall growth. SLS and Orion, uh, of course, those are our key anchor tenants that we have here, but we have a multi-tenant facility. We have uh, Textron, they do a lot of work here, they do a lot of logistics uh, for a lot of military parts uh, that we store here. We also have uh, Blade Dynamics, which was acquired recently by GE, and they produce these uh, large uh, wind turbine blades. The U.S. Coast Guard uh, do a lot of their work uh, here with their cutter. And then we have uh, USDA uh, also has a large operations uh, that they do here for uh, payroll processing. Believe it or not, they process one third of the federal uh, government uh, payroll. And that's over $200 billion every two weeks that runs through this particular facility. We also have Big Easy Productions. And they do uh, movies that I can't talk about right now, but they also do movie productions. Uh, here as uh, well. So there's a lot of great things that come out of Mishu that you wouldn't realize. And that allows us to kind of offset some of our costs back to the work we do from a NASA perspective. And that's key when you start talking about the taxpayer dollars. So you know we had Katrina back in the 2005 time frame and we had a team, we call it the Ride Out Team. That Ride Out Team consists of uh, 38 individuals. These are men and women 
who uh, spent their time here safe in this facility during the actual storm. You had to manually go set the, the actual pump, so how much water that it was going to be pumping out at a time. These individuals, they did one more last final check just to make sure they had it uh, properly set. If they would have over adjusted or under adjusted, that means we could have lost this entire facility, which means it could have been the end of the shuttle program. You had wind damage that had caused uh, damage to the roof lines. They were repairing roofs. They were trying to make sure that uh, the water that did get into some of the buildings, they were drying those particular spaces up. And we were able to honor those individuals uh, back, back in the fall. And without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I take my hat off to those men and women that, that support this facility. So a lot of times you think about New Orleans being a great place for great jazz or great food or the French Quarter. In order to get to space, you must come through New Orleans.